they don't let that go easily. So hopefully they were able to reset and come into this series fresh and just put everything out of their mind and say, okay, we've beaten TSM before when the stakes were higher. You know, now we can do it again here. Yeah, in the last five maps that TSM has played versus NIP, T NIP have won four of them. Mm. The only map that TSM actually picked up was uh, Dust 2, no, Inferno mm -hmm. in uh, Katowice. So NIP definitely have the, the upper hand in terms of previous results and all that. And they do have that <laughs> nip magic, if you want to, you know, as Thorin likes to put it. Yeah, man, Thorin loves to wave, wave <laughs> his magic wand around. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> They, they do have that kind of thing, but they always play better when it comes down to it. When it really matters, they always make it work. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to get live with the pistol round here. And this is going to be NIP. After having won the knife round, they're going to swap over to the CT side. And already, Cat Stack coming in for the Ninjas. They want to catch out TSM early, but nothing lands, actually, for either team. TSM seemed prepared for it as well. They peeked together in lower dark and were able to pick up on what the Ninjas were setting up for them. But now... It comes back to a bit more of a stable game. You can see Nip starting to spread out back across the map. TSM taking over mid and starting to apply the pressure on Cat. And look at this, just no fear from TSM. They just go straight running in. And they've already gotten control over the bomb side. And well, get right in Freiburg has to do a lot of work here. The biggest thing for them as of right now is not to die, really. Because he's Sipnik's up in mid here. He's going to help or make the rotations from NIP a lot harder. Oh, but they managed to fail that. Cajun B and Sipnik's missing their shots. And now all of a sudden, NIP are going to be able to start pushing and applying pressure on the men holding the site. And they're just going to quickly overwhelm the defense. That is the problem. TSM, they had the plan. They just weren't able to execute on it. Yeah, exactly. And with that crossfire they had in mid there from Catwalk in top of mid, that definitely should lead to at least one kill. We see Forrest surviving with 5 HP. If he goes down, all of a sudden team TSM have bought themselves so much time, so much more space to work with. Mm -hmm. And it's also going to make it a lot harder for the two guys from NIP stuck over at long to actually push forward to the side. So it really comes down to TSM not hitting the shot in the pistol, but... But that, that after such an initial, like a, such an aggressive push, exactly. and you could clearly see it was TSM trying to shake off the demons, just saying, you know what, bite the bullet, go up onto that site, get the job done, straight up cat, don't let Nip get set up. Exactly, just go straight at it from the get-go. And I think that's the right mentality to have for TSM, and they, they just have to realize that, well, we only won that, you know, lost that round because we messed up a little bit, but that's going to be fine. Once we get into this, that's going to work. That's a round that's going to be ours the next time around. And you know, a bit of a wink there as well. You know, Forrest, he lived through the round. And when Forrest doesn't die in the pistol, you know, according to everybody, apparently, you know, if you don't kill Forrest, you're not picking up that round. So NIP, they managed to weather the storm, and they are going to be able to move into this uh, Dust 2 with a strong start. Already up to the rifles as well as we can see, and this is expected. No surprise from TSM, however, just going straight up to Tech Nines, a scout as well, and all who's going to get the tag on the man on Cat, and he gets a follow-up shot onto Debris as well, looking for the third one, not going to get it, goes for the jump, and he is still here, but this is a trade situation here, it's a four on four, and that bomb should be able to get planted. Yeah, device is about to plant the bump for short here. And, nice uh, shot ooh, by Kerrigan. Kerrigan. What a shot onto Exist. That's what had to happen there in the pistol. This time around, Kerrigan takes matters into his own hands. And they are just continuing with the firefight. Alu is now the last man alive. Just hold up on long, but he knows that there isn't anything that he can really do in this 1v3. He's going to try and back off and hold on to his gun. Yeah, and you can already see the second that they actually managed to hold off the initial pressure from Catwalk or coming in from mid, it's so much harder for Alu to actually put pressure on from long because all of the focus for TSM is going to be towards long because they know Alu's there. And, well, that's what, they, that's what they wanted to see as a result in the pistol round. Weren't able to do it. This time, Carrigan opens up with two huge frags, and that pretty much settles it for TSM. Dude, it's like some people have spirit animals. Carrigan has a spirit gun. Like, the Tech yeah. 9 for him is just, like, golden. It really is. And he comes through in the clutch for TSM so many times with it. You saw it on Overpass. He didn't have a great game on Overpass. Actually struggled quite a bit mm. holding that B-bomb site. But as soon as he got a Tech 9, that opened up everything for, for TSM. It actually led to that crucial round that they actually needed. Yeah, where he got the two kills going on to that B side. I mean, I said it himself. Uh, yeah. It actually feels a bit more comfortable with the Tech 9 because you run so much faster than with an AK. So you're going to be everywhere you want to go two seconds faster. Mm -hmm. And that's going to throw the opponent as well because they're going to hit the Tech 9s, you know, the fear strikes in their heart. And they don't really have the opportunity to run away because they're so much slower. For some reason, that sounds like you know we're taking a step back into like our ancestors, right? Where you hear <laughs> the lions roar, and all of a sudden, you know, you start to shake with fear. Now it's the Tech Nine. You know, trouble is coming, and there you go, all with the jump shot. But he's not going to hit it. Good information gained, but then he decides to fall back to B site. This is a bit of a stack coming out now from NIP, covering on long, but they're going to get found out. TSM just walk out onto that B site for free. And this is what we saw TSM do versus Titan as well. As soon as they know that they're up against an eco. They just walk as a group towards the B-bomb site. No nades, no nothing. Just having one guy cover mid, basically to see if there's going to be 
two, three, or four mm -hmm. potential NIP members crossing over. Obviously, we haven't seen that happen for many of the teams. Like nobody has actually committed to B stack so far. So as long as TSM doesn't see any you know, red lights flashing at the beginning of the round, they're just going to continue to do this every single anti-eco they have. And it's been working out great for them so far. What I'm curious about is the standoff in T-Spawn right now. You have everybody <laughs> gathered up over there from NIP. They seem to know that this is where TSM are going to go. And there you go. Everybody going to be rushing in. Get right has got a Tech-9 to work with. And he's just going for the spray and pray. Totally flashed white, however. And he's going to get overwhelmed by Kerrigan. Tech-9 of his own gets two kills for it. Forrest comes in with a headshot. And they are still standing off here. Exist just looking to dance on the edge. And they will be living through the round, NIP. But now it gets a little tricky here. Yeah, they do manage to keep the, the scout on Alu. It's actually got a diffuse kit and head armor as well, which could come in handy. We've seen we've seen things happen in CS, to put it that way, where a kit is all you need to win around. And look, once again, same play coming out here from yeah. NIP and identical play from TSM. The mid has been smoked off, so they can't quite know how many people have gone across. But again, TSM are content to walk in as a group, all four members. It worked last time. Why change it up? There's the flash. Alu gets the tag this time, however, onto Sipnix. He's not going to be able to get the follow-up, and they're just going to nade him into oblivion. No time wasted from TSM. They know exactly how to deal with that jumping scout. Now, yeah, so TSM, as long as it... <laughs> TSM are living by, by the motto of never change a winning team, you know, winning, never change a winning strategy. And yeah, there's the flash in, but it is a slaughter outright. Everybody getting kills. Get right, however, will catch out Kerrigan, who was looking a little greedy there, knife in hand. He was trying to go for the flying knife to the face. But the Vice gets revenge for his fallen mate, and that is going to be another round on the board here for TSM. Just the perfect turnaround after losing the pistol. Yeah, very solid rounds from anti eco rounds from TSM as well, limiting the losses. It's only. Carrigan really, who's died a lot. Well, no, when I say a lot, it's, it's fine. Three it isn't times. too expensive to re-equip him, right? Exactly. It's a Tech Nine, so it's going to be all fine. And Device actually opting to pick up the OP. It's going to go for the quick pick, uh, pick towards long. In the meantime, they've gathered up an upper dark here. TSM. I believe the smoke is going to go down over there, so they won't be able to get really much of a peak going towards that B site. Instead, we can see Device taking a peek towards Longhouse. So nothing really happening over on the uh, on that side of the map either. It seems like a bit of a standstill now for both teams, although Dupree did just eat a big nade. So a little bit of damage there taken by Dupree to start. And uh, TSM focusing heavily around that middle area, and uh, both Forrest and Alu there to, to defend for NIP, and Forrest starts like, oh, What God. a shot from Alu! The timing works out perfectly. Pulls the trigger and nails two TSM members with one shot. And if you're TSM, what do you do about that? <laughs> that's just that's just shake your head, right? Yeah, you like, just have to give it to him. Tip, tip of the hat, give credit where credit is due. See if you could tweet live from CS, you know, just be <laughs> SMH, you know, the, what, what are you going to do, Alu? There you have it. And now they're trying to they're trying to just get something going for themselves here at TSM, but Alu's still alive on the A slope looking for that cat kill, and he's going to get it. Quad kill for Alu. And the thing is, is that Alu's state of mind right now, he is still the hungry one on this team. He is still the one who's looking to prove himself, right? And so the pressure is just not there for the finished player. He is just the one who's going to go in, focus on playing his game. And throughout a lot of these matches where Nip have struggled, Alu has been at the top of the scoreboard. He doesn't seem to be missing too many frags. Yeah, exactly. When In the big games, we've normally seen Forrest get right. One of those two guys step up and be, be the player for, for NIP. But so far, it's been Alu. Well, look at this already. Very quick push out Longhouse this time around. And TSM, they're going to get flashed in. Get right holding on the angle. Does get the drop, does go for the spray, and just blinded totally, misses everything. He does tag down two players fairly low. Kerrigan and Sipnix have suffered a lot, but there's Forrest going in. Just a one for one, though, and they will take that any day of the week. TSM, if they can trade kill like that, it's only going to favor the T's. And Alu actually kind of boxed in between smokes here, stuck in CT spawn, and obviously <laughs> he'll want to find a frag, but most likely his best case scenario is saving here. Well, that is best case scenario, but this is a catastrophe for NIP. They get their buy-in, they win, but then they're going to be right back to ecoing unless Alu can work some magic here. There's the shot from Dupree, gets the timing just right as Alu attempts another peek. And there you go. They go for the hard reset again. NIP, do they go for a force buy here, Ven? I mean, they're kind of floating in the middle. Well, Nip will actually go for a force buy. I think it's still too early to actually force up in this position, especially because you've, well, you've struggled with guns. I mean, Alu bailed you out that one round, so I don't really say uh, that can't really count in that sense. So forcing up with lesser weapons, not having the same nades. If TSM get a clue of this, they can pretty much starve them out. But look at Get Right. Yeah, he's going to catch out Kerrigan. Kerrigan not going to expect this push at all. The but jump? Get Right jumps and takes a lot of damage because of that. Is, that is he using a rival? Is he using a rival? Uh, one I of the two. 
Oh, that, that, well. like at that point, you need you're gonna get art flimmers if you get right. Yeah, get right. I would love to see the cam there for a second. You can see, he's, well, <laughs> you know, a little bit of a twitch there, but uh, that was way too close. What should have been a free kill without taking any damage at all. Get right's now down to 39 HP, so he's got to be a little bit careful. But they do manage to bring a kill back. So TSM with the opening entry very early on in the round. Nip somewhat stabilized that, and are going to be able to cover a little bit more ground now with a four on four. But TSM with 50 seconds left, we have to see exactly where they want to take this. Yeah, and right now TSM just kind of slowly setting up towards uh, towards the bomb site. They might want to split that between you know, do an, do an A split really nice and easy, and that's going to work out pretty nicely for them, seeing how. Nipa still holding heavy towards that B bomb site. Well, Get right's in the perfect position to get the first pick. Device is down. And he continues to hold on Cat. Second man here, Cajun B. He falls to Get right. Get right coming through big in this round. He heard us call him out, Ven. Now he rotates back, trying to get eyes onto Long, trying to keep them off of this bomb site. Goes for the mad spray, a la Get right. And he's not going to get it done this time around. Dupree will cut him down. And again, had he had just a little bit more HP. If it had gone a little bit smoother at the beginning of the round, we might have seen a different outcome there. Alu, however, with a flank on a long is not going to get it. Dupree finds another headshot, and we're into a two-on-two -two retake scenario now for NIP. Both of them coming up. Cat as well. There's the smoke going down, and Forrest lands the first shot. Forrest gets the second one, and Forrest to the rescue. We'll save it for NIP. And, uh, well, he'd say Forrest saves them, but get right. He put in the majority of the work there for NIP. If he goes down, as you said, he was only on 39 HP, so that's two AK bullets. If he takes those two AK bullets from any of the guys on Catwalk, then all of a sudden TSM have a bomb site. They're going to have time to get into proper uh, after plant positions. Mm -hmm. And they can actually buy time during the after plant as well because they're going to be actually far enough away to start contesting NIP early if they choose to do so. But Gero coming through in the clutch right there. And it looked shaky after that first kill. Oh, missed opportunity there by Device. The doubled HE2. He gets down, dropped down to 10 HP. That was a painful mistake there made by Device. He had a good opportunity to get the entry frag, but not connecting with that AWP shot, that's not something that you can do. You have to land that shot if you have it. Yeah, and actually missed that in, in the first buy round as well. He missed that shot, which, you know, you'd think that should be a pretty easy, it's easy one of those, opening for it's, the Device. It's one of those, like, if you get the long spawn like that, and you get there fast, and you can catch that CT member out in the open, he doesn't even have the angle to hide behind, like, you need to land that shot. So we have to see Device, you know, get his game going. Dupree... Kerrigan, these guys are waking up, but now we see. And it looks like they're going to use device to try and create an, an opportunity here as well on Cat. So we'll see. But nobody is peeking out for an IP right now. It's Alu holding it about the most passive position possible, and Alu gets the first shot. Crucial that he does. And that follow-up, H.E. Nay, touchdown. Can he get another one? He's still here. Goes for the flash. He's going to go for the peek. And he gets nailed by Cajun B. But then get right. This is bought enough time for him to peek out from Goose and actually pick up one. He could go for a second one as well, but he gets overwhelmed by Sipnix. This is still a favorable position, however, for NIP. They have the man advantage, but somehow Cajun B is here to save it for TSM, and he brings it back to a 1v1. Exist is so close, however, but Exist not taking any risks, really taking his time with this push, and this could completely catch Cajun off guard. But in the timing, Cajun looks towards a slope, but looks away just as Exist peaks. And uh, TSM actually make a round out of that, because with the two entry fracks that Aldo get there, that should be an easy cleanup mm. for, for, uh, for NIP. And I actually think Gary kind of botched that well, watch the not necessarily flank, but when he pushed out from uh, from Lee Crew there, he definitely should have been able to pick up two frags. That surprise hold. Thinks that, well, yeah. that's the thing. I mean, we were, we got to him a little bit late, so we don't know how much like how much spray it took to get the first guy there. Oh, way too, it looked way like too he, much. He looks like he ran out of bullets there. Yeah, he actually did. And <laughs> the problem is that you know Alu's bought so much time for you with those two entry frags, and he's still the fo you know, main focus of attention for TSM because he hasn't died yet. Mm -hmm. uh, gives Skerai all the opportunity in the world to basically just clean oh. people out one by one, and Alu just continues his good it, form. Alu, yeah, he is just beasting right now. Another great nade from him to follow up on a frag. He drops three guys fairly, well, does some damage to three guys. We're not going to say low, but that's that's significant right there. Dupree now down to 70 HP. Forrest looking for the headshot at Big Box, but Cajun B is going to take out Getright. Another headshot there for TSM. And Cajun, man, he is the one who's starting to warm up here. I mean, it was mentioned before this match that there are there's like no weak link in the sense that there's no superstar on TSM. They're all capable of ruining your day. And so it seems like right now, at least, Cajun B is the one taking the four. Yeah, Cajun's been playing pretty well, actually, all tournament. And he's kind of the player from TSM that never really gives you a poor performance. Mm. And that's always nice to have if, you, if you're on the Danish team. Because Dupree and Device, they can swing up and down. Wow. Oh, exists. That's fantastic right there. And this is this is just a hard committal here from TSM. They're going into this B site, looking to find the headshot onto Exist. This is setting it up so well here. 
Not sure if they've spotted the bomb, but that's going to be it. Forrest steps in and sprays down the remaining two members of TSM. That's a perfect bounce back for NIP. It looked a little shaky there, but now they're starting to get their feet back under them. They've got, they still don't have much of a bank to work with, but they're going to be able to afford to get a big buy round in here. And this is now going to be an eco round from TSM. So here's the opportunity now for NIP to get a little bit of breathing room. Yeah, I'm actually quite surprised that we're not seeing Tech Knights out of them. They do have the money to invest into Tech Knights and still get a proper buy in the next round. So that leads me to believe that they might want to go with two orbs from here on and out. And it's going to be interesting to see whether or not it's Kerrigan or Cajun to pick mm. up that second op if they do opt for that. Well, Forrest showing that he can still hit the headshots. This is an anti-eco round here for NIP, so no Kevlar there to mitigate the damage. A great headshot onto Forrest is going to force him to fall back, but Get Right is here to plug the gap. He's already managed to pick off Kerrigan, who was lurking around. They're going to just go charging up Catwalk, however. Here it is, TSM trying to run across, and Alu gets caught. The Vice with two kills from the Tech 9 and he turns out he actually makes that an expensive round for NIP. No bomb plant for TSM, but they still managed to pick up two kills. Yeah, pick up two kills, which is nice. Unfortunately for them, the NIP are going to be able to pick up Alu's orb. That's a big save right there. Yeah, that's a lot of money saved. And now, actually, they opt for no orbs. This is surprising. You can see the device would have easily been able to afford the orb. But I think in the straight running gun, they want to get some aggression going when, uh, when the time comes. That wouldn't be too surprising if they want to have a sudden execute towards, maybe towards the A-bomb site. Out along, you can see they're kind of setting up here. Oh, well, there's the flash into Longhouse. Do they have the opportunity? They have to get the refrag, but Frybear controls this spray perfectly and picks up two headshots for NIP. And the timing, the way that that worked out, TSM were about to put two guys in there, but Freiburg just manages to get there a second too early for TSM to react in time. Fantastic play from the Fry well, from the Freiburg, right? From the Swedish entry fragger. From the Freiburg. I mean, he is the beast. And he is the key player for NIP. Well, let's see here. Alu once again hitting that shot. I mean, Catwalk, he has just been locking it down. TSM continue to just run into this blender, misses that shot, and now they become more and more difficult, but he'll find the third one. Takes his time to line it up, and really, it feels like he's at the firing range. Like, this is just him taking his time. He knows that there's no pressure. Oh, yeah, it really feels like he's shooting at dummies. Not that TSM could do very much differently, but Alu is actually one of the few orpers that actually hit the first shot mm. when he comes, when you hold from the car position. You see so many orps. Pretty much every orp who plays catwalk at some point in a game goes to that position by cars, and nearly everyone misses that first shot and lets the T side actually get closer into in towards the side, but Alu's just feeling it right now. Yeah, and he continues to just reign supreme. Picks up another kill onto Cat. There's the double AWP play. Forrest picks up another one. This is an anti-eco round, and Forrest hangs around a little bit too long there. The double kill comes in for Kerrigan, once again, with his favorite spirit gun. He's got that Tech 9 in hand, and he's got the AWP as well, and he has Kevlar, but Alu is there to ruin his day. Three kills for Alu, two for Forrest. And, well... Still an expensive round for NIP. I mean, they're keeping three guys alive. That's the important bit. But still, so long as TSM can continue to get two to three kills in these rounds, these, these eco rounds, that still forces TSM, or rather NIP to spend more money than they would like. These are supposed to be perfect rounds for NIP where they can just, you know, build a big bank going into the remainder of this half. It does open. We're going to see TSM push quickly out onto Long here. It's a bit of a change of pace. Oh, the flash and the spray, and Freiburg is caught before he can make it into the safety of Pit. Alu is here, however, on long. Totally flashes the go jumping in, but he still manages to pick up a kill onto Sipnix. Such a crucial shot. Forrest with the AWP looking to catch them out, but he's missing shot after shot here. He will need to connect eventually. That bomb is dropped out in the open, however, and that's a little bit scary for TSM, but it looks like uh, they'll be able to dart out and pick it up. Yeah, Nipper actually giving up the bomb side. Get right pushing out on short here and just misses Cajun. Oh, he spots him now, and that sets it up for Forrest to take the peek and remove Cajun from the map. And he spots out the man at top mid. Is he going to find that headshot? Not looking like it. Dupree doesn't want any of that. Oh, but get right. He get could right, easily however. catch the vice of guard here. Oh, that's a big double frag. And there you go, NIP. They were, looked a little rattled at the start, but they are certainly feeling a lot better here. Get right, starting to get some confidence to really take these fights. Yeah, and weirdly enough, with how NIP decided to rotate, that would have actually been a favorable position for TSM if they just stuck with it and kept pushing on long, because NIP were perfectly fine going for a retake in that situation. So TSM could have gotten a lot more out of it than what they eventually did. But look at Alu, so aggressive. Oh, really aggressive. And now that's there. Yeah, that's scary. Kerrigan not going to let that slide. You need to get that first kill if you're going to be in such an aggressive position. 
No, well, this could be the well. This could be basically the comeback here for TSM. If they can pick up six rounds on their T side, they're they're going to be very happy. So they have the perfect opportunity here. Oh, a man Freiburg. advantage. Freiburg. And Freiburg walks right out into Sipnix. On a wild adventure, walking through smokes out Long Cave. Sipnix just ready and waiting. And now NIPR the spread very thin. Forest needs to come up absolutely massive for them. Misses the first shot. And now on A slope, this is very tricky for him. He has to just play these timings right. The flash goes out and he doesn't take a step to the left. He did, if he did, he could have had a free kill. Misses the second flick. Needs to find the third and he will get that shot. Cajun B is down. Forrest remains and he's buying so much time for his team to rotate in. But in the meantime, Kerrigan finds Get Right. Forrest with another one, but he's not going to get the flick. And Kerrigan and Dupree will close it out for TSM. Three members alive here and the AWP saved for Device if he wants it. And it is going to go, no, Device gets dropped. An AK, who's got the AWP? It has to go to Device. Yeah, Device yeah. is going to have it. I just wanted to buy the Tech Knight first. Priorities. Priorities, man. But that could have been very scary for TSM. They were so slow to push onto that side. So Forrest had, what, eight shots? Eight opportunities How to actually long, pick up frags. Right? And that TSM can't allow that. And now, again, keeping up with the high tempo. Yeah, this is going to be Freiburg. He does manage to make it into pit this time around. Two players down already. Dupree trying to return on it. Device looking for space to find a shot with the AWP. But NIP refused to give it to him. He's going to be dancing right on the edge of that smoke, but they decide to back off. Only problem is that bomb is out in the middle of nowhere. It might as well be in Siberia right now for how far it is for TSM to actually get their hands on it. And Forrest just dominates mid. Kerrigan down Dupree as well. And it's now just Device all by his lonesome in a 1v4. He needs to go here. Freiburg is just going to lie and wait around those doors. There was no option for Device at the end with the bomb where it was. Yeah, and uh, with that heavy committal towards the long area, sure you lose too, but as soon as Dupree picks up the first kill for, for TSM, you're kind of committed to it. You, uh, there's, you're not going to get anything out of walking back and out mm. along at that point. Because, as you said, bomb far away. And NIP have probably converged on loads, loads of other places in the map, gotten map control, and have a good idea of where the TSM members are boxed in. So for TSM, you can kind of have to think to yourselves that, well, our best shot is actually going after these two players that we've, we know where are. We've probably tagged them up a fair bit already, and then we can work it out from there. Mm -hmm. Basic, because you don't have to commit too long fully and actually go towards the bomb site after you have taken the fights with the two remaining NIP members. You can always go back and, and redo things, but initially they have, again, have to have the bomb control and do something with it. Well, Kerrigan making very good use of his nades to begin. He's going to be able to get boosted up onto long, or rather on, well, onto A site, looking towards long. The remaining NIP members are here, but look at Cajun B. He's pushed up behind them. He's landing the shots, and there it is. The perfect flank manages to pick up one at least. And this is going to sandwich NIP onto long. They need to get up onto this site. Get right takes matters into his own hands, and he swaps out for the Tech 9. Now he's got some real firepower, but Cajun B looking for the long range shot. He's not going to get it. Just tags up exist. Get right takes out Sepnix, and now NIP, they refuse to give up. They will not bow, and they're going to go push it right through the smoke. What an aggressive push, and Dupree is not going to have any of it. Shuts them down with two headshots. Don't get ahead of yourselves, NIP. If you just go rushing right at him, I mean, a player like Dupree should not miss kills like that. And he didn't. But Carrigan, again, Carrigan is getting so many important frags for TSM. He's just doing a massive amount of work for them. But that was as simple as you can get it. TSM, they really living by by the rule of simplicity. Just bum rushing out long, firing away. And again, just straight up long aggression coming out here, and they're just finding the kills. Long range, Freiburg with that Tech 9. Then Cajun B just trying to find that shot. Runs out of bullets, and Forrest gets the kill from short. The pre and device, the last two players alive here. But they do manage to stop that bomb. They have spotted it on A slope as well, so they know where it's getting planted in a two-on-three scenario, and now that NIP actually has some rifles to work with, this is very dangerous for TSM. They're in real danger of losing this round, especially now that all has been able to set up on long. Dupree will find one, but then get right peeks out and picks up both remaining frags, and NIP are right back into this. It seems like each team is able to pick up the pistol, and then it's almost like a going according to plan. The anti-eco, they cannot hold. I'm honestly curious as to what kind of ratio we're seeing of eco's one Second round on T side. Mm -hmm. It has to be absolutely staggering. Well, the straight up, I mean, it's just straight up fights that these that are being taken right now. Nice tag on the Freiburg there by Device. Very fast on his feet with that scout, no surprise there. In the meantime, at long, there's been a bit of a battle. Exist will return it in, T in NIP's favor. With oh. Kerrigan getting taken out by Exist. Zipnix is going to have a rough time here on the A bomb site. 
This is a very difficult position. Get right just dancing on the edge of that smoke as well, holding. And they're going to peek out right on time. Sip not able to find the kill, but he does a lot of damage to Get right. Drops him down around half HP, but then Get right just comes right back in and shows him how it's done with the Tech 9. Dupree now looking to find that kill, and he just needs to get it done, but he just cannot connect. And Get right finds another headshot. Device will finally end the show for Get right, but. There's too much damage done here. He's in a 1v3. Needs to find an incredible headshot, but it's just not going to happen. Exist will take him out, and NIP are now four rounds away from picking up this map. Yeah, NIP showing, showing strength early on here. Now it comes on. Well, obviously, TSM are going to have to eco, so <laughs> this should be another round for, for NIP. At that, from that point in on, the big question is how much is TSM going to commit to that double orb setup that they've been allowed to run on their CP sides. Well, are they going to be given the opportunity to use it? Because they're basically going to get one shot. But Exist, just keeping his cool. This is a PG-50 buy coming out from TSM. So if you can manage your shots well with the FAMAS, you're going to get the job done. Exist just continues to pressure, takes out Sipnix next, and Alu taking a battle with the last remaining member here for TSM. Device doing the best that he can from Lower Dark. Not a hope for him to actually win the round, and this HE is pretty much going to end it. Nicely done by Alu. He's had some fantastic HE nades on uh, Dust2 so far. Yeah, he's just had a fantastic game overall. He is, he's, he's no is longer he still the leading? No, no he is not. No, Forrest has actually surpassed him, but still, Alu early on on that CT side kind of set the set the pace and. Well, you gotta say, you gotta got point it out. Rhythm. Whenever, whenever you know the criticism comes in for NIP, you know X player, Y player, you know this is what they need to succeed. All three of those players, Forrest, Get Right, and Alu. Sitting right at the top of the scoreboard, and this could not go better here. <laughs> the first buy round, the real buy round coming in for TSM, and they've already lost a man to a great peak from Alu at Longhouse. And already, Alu's been able to do something that TSM couldn't for the entire first half, just getting that early opening frag. And now that gives NIP so much room to work with. And previously, talked about it, TSM knew that they were giving too much space to NIP on the catwalk area, and continuously, NIP would just go to cat, set up, mm. and do an execute towards that A site. There's with a man down, this is going to be oh. so tough. I love these Molotovs. Cajun is now going to be crouched in that corner. He's got little, very little room to work with. Freiburg hits a perfect headshot onto Kerrigan. That's going to open things up. Cajun B, however, going to be here. Lying and waiting. Goose, two kills. Manages to get the third. No, he's going to mess up his spray. And this is it. NIP. It, this is going to be just a one-way street. Total stomp. Straight to the 1-0 victory so far. I mean... What can TSM realistically do in this position? They have no money to work with. It's, it's got to be just force up with whatever you can. Yeah, it's the Hail Mary at this point. Whereas it NIP really are is. perfectly well equipped here. They can throw away rounds what? happily. Oh, that was a leg shot. Okay, I yeah. was about to say, like, he, how do you take damage from an HE? How do you take so much damage? <laughs> and now well, it doesn't really matter, does AK it? Headshot, yeah, AK headshots do a lot of damage. They don't slow down the pace. Cajun is going to get caught by Get Right. This time around, Get Right landing that long distance spray. Sipnik's doing the best he can to try and hold them off from Long, and he's got support here as well from Kerrigan, and they're going to move up onto A slope, so this is going to slow things down here somewhat. Great double shot onto Exist, and Get Right taken out as well, but Alu now lays in with the AWP. Two kills from him, and it's just a pre left, but not for Long. And NIP just completely powering through. They are not looking to waste any time at all here. And right now, there's nothing really TSM can do because they're forced into the situation where well, they opt either opt for firepower in terms of weapons or, or gr less of firepower and, and grenades so they can hold back pushes, but NIP just know what they want and they continuously abuse TSM from that catwalk. One thing to note is that TSM are still using that HE trick to get past long door or to get past mid doors. Double stack here, and they certainly were not expecting that ninjas, but then they step in, Freiburg gets one and he gets both, and that's a catastrophe for TSM! They had the advantage, but Freiburg single-handedly turning it around. Cajun B doing the best he can, but he has no Kevlar. And Get Right with the random shot through the smoke will pick him off. Down into a four on two, and the B site is now in ninja control. And the question is now whether Kerrigan can get the drop on this man. It is not going to happen. Alu is going to trade it up. Exist is there to get the final frag of the map, but a 16-6. Very swift victory for NIP to start off this best of three. Very swift indeed, and NIP, we talked about it, when it matters, they do show up, and this was actually...